All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, welcome to the Mastery School Committee uh, meeting of October 24th, 2018. We'll call the meeting to order at uh, 5.32. And first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Thank you. Uh, next is uh, public comment, and we do not have any public comment at this time. So we'll move on to the next item, which is the uh, Isakum Special Education Teacher, uh, Alana Murphy. Please come to the microphone. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, I was just asked to come and speak to you about um, on the 27th of September, um, our school was gifted over $10,000 worth of supplies and materials um, through people all over the world based on a contest that I won on Instagram through Kristen Bell, um, Busy Phillips, and a number of different other celebrities that have started doing it. Um, <coughs> One casual Friday night, I entered <laughs> on Instagram, um, right place, right time, and I was um, chosen due to our population um, and due to just sheer luck, I guess. Um, so she posted the picture on the 27th of September, and ever since then, we've been receiving just an overwhelming amount of donations. Um, things like flexible seating, things like books, uh, different learning materials just a ton of stuff to help our kids learn. Um, some of the coolest things that we've gotten are the flexible seating options, which we've seen put into action already for the past month, and our kids' focus, especially the kids on my caseload, the special education kids, um, has improved immensely. They're, they're able to sit in groups where they weren't able to do that before. Um, they're able to participate and focus, and it's, it's such a joy, um, especially for myself as a special ed teacher where these kids, you know, we were having behavior issues before, they couldn't sit still, they can do that now, um, and they can attend, which is great. Um, so it's real, it was, a, it was a true gift that we, were, that we got. Can you share how you developed your list of items that have come to Coombs? Sure, um, so <clears throat> it was really a collaboration between myself, um, the other special education teachers, the occupational therapists, the speech therapists, as well as the other grade level teachers. Um, when I was initially chosen, I, I spoke to my inclusion team um, and we put together a list and that was purchased all in five minutes. <laughs> so we had to <laughs> really think hard. Um, so we got a lot of occupational therapy supplies, um, weighted blankets, body socks, things that really just supplement what we already have. Um, a additionally, we got a lot for the clinical department. So we got things that, um, CBT games, things that will really make clinical work accessible for our children, which is important. Um, it, was, it was a huge collaboration effort between pretty much everyone at KCC. Yeah, it was great. Thanks. Can you just, mm -hmm. for, for my edification, what is a flexible seat? I'm picturing a bean bag. But I'm so assuming, actually, I, I'm that assuming is it's something more than that. So we did get three bean bag chairs. Okay, um, so, that's so it very is flexible. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's just ways for the students to be able to access seating options um, that aren't necessarily your standard typical desk and seat. Um, it works for all kids, but I think especially with kids on you know, IEPs and 504s, it really allows them to access different things um, in the curriculum uh, while they're still moving, but they're able to sit. So for example, we got those wonderful beanbag chairs. Um, additionally, we got floor desks. So they're able to sit on the floor and do partner work in different groups in the classroom. Um, and still write. They also got rocker chairs, um, or they're more like scoop chairs. They're the little buckets that they sit in that they can write at and sit on um, during small group work or during whole group instruction. Um, we got some ball chairs, so some yoga ball chairs with stabilizers that allow kids with, who are, love to be in motion um, to be able to be in motion but still be able to sit and do their work. Um, I have a ball chair in my office. It's great. <laughs> Highly recommend it. <laughs> Thank you. And you mentioned that um, you said there are things still coming in? Yes. So we're still getting a very slow amount of um, 
kind of single items at this point. Um, I know that there are other teachers who have been featured since mine. Um, apparently, you can still access my wish list. It's um, really very few and far between at this point, though. I see. Um, yeah. It was really a solid two-week period where I was getting calls from the post office every day to come pick up <laughs> three or four kind of um, carols of, of boxes. Um, and what was wonderful about this was the kids actually were able to help unload the boxes from the trucks and bring them and open everything themselves. Um, so they were able to take ownership of what we got and they saw everything and they were able to really, really be a huge part of this whole experience. So they wrote thank you notes um, to our donors and I was able to send them out. We wrote one class thank you note and I was able to take a picture and send it out to some people. Um, not everyone put their name. But what the most touching part of it was those who donated did actually write a little um, kind of note of encouragement for our school and for our class. Um, so for those you know, thousands of donations, I got thousands of notes too, just really encouraging, which is beautiful. It was very emotional to read every single one. <laughs> it was great. So cool. Yeah, it was, it was wonderful. Anybody else? Great. Just want to say thank you for yeah. your situational awareness and yeah. getting this done for the kids in, in yeah, our school. Awesome. So it's uh, great to hear. Thank you. Thanks yeah. so Appreciate much. Appreciate it. It was really nice to just open the paper and see a great story about, you know, and just see the kids and really appreciate, um, especially in these kind of lean budget times, that, mm -hmm. that there was funding coming from somewhere that, yep. you know, um, went directly to the students. So yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Great. All right, next on the agenda is the... Uh, Report of the business administrator and superintendent. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. Start Polfo. On, I'll superintendent um, building even building next year's budget we pulled a lot of it a lot of it out of um, the uh, schools and put it centralized in the, um, the technology so uh, we're not I, I feel comfortable with the 348 right now I, I'd like to just leave it there and if there's a couple of small other things I'd like to add to it <coughs> because we will have the option to transfer uh, to a journal entry to bring that back. And um, we don't want to do that as the choice money can roll from one year to the next. So um, I'll watch that closely when I feel um, I've reached the, uh, the top of the mountain. I'll come to the Supreme meeting and yeah, I think we'll have to. But we've purchased, I, I would say we've purchased most of our most of the stuff we want to purchase this year. There, there's always something goes on. Okay. <coughs> on page 10, um, uh, transportation. Uh, we do have some of the transportation incumbent, but you'll notice the said transportation is still at $213,291. That <coughs> represents the out of district, so that could fluctuate every month because you could have someone coming back to the district someone going out uh, more than one student going out so that's the only thing that we have an incumbent i try to encumber everything so i know when i look at those balances those are the balances that i have to work with to offset the three hundred forty-eight thousand that i just talked about so because uh, we want to try to offset that in <coughs> that we're saving in other lines do we currently have anyone um, 
with the Chinese oh, yeah. they, they okay. a bunch. I, I, I'm hoping the 62,000 is enough. But I, you know, again, that's that's something that fluctuates again, month to month, week to week. We have about seven. Se seven kids. Okay. I had a quick math question. <coughs> On that line, you're talking about the sped transportation. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> we have a. A balance of two hundred thirteen thousand, but yet it says ninety-eight percent is used. I'll have to check. Yeah, that's not correct. Yeah. It's probably more like sixty or seventy percent. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to see what my point up above. Yeah. All right, I'll I'll check into that. Uh, but that two thirteen, that is the. Uh, the uh, Part of it is we haven't, haven't received the bill yet. And they they, they sit on the highways and so forth. And so. I have to change the collaborative bill. Do, do we have any more out of district than what we originally thought we were going to have? Um, do we have any more additions? Oh, yeah. We had, we had a one person go out there. I think it's a, is it a, I don't know. Um, and I did meet with the uh, spend director today and there are two more potential. Okay. You know, uh, the potential, we don't know when they'll, they'll go out. Could be the, could be January. Could be, could be, you know. She just keeps me updated on the out of district <coughs> tuition. And um, you know when, when it might happen, it might happen sooner. But she tried to give, give me the best uh, uh, answer that she uh, can. She did it not the curly I, I, I commented to the superintendent that she, she keeps me well aware of, uh, of when the students are, uh, the possibilities of going out, where they're going, and then we talk about the cost. Okay. That's where I'm heading next. To the uh, out of districts. Um, page. Oh, I'm sorry, page 21. Thank you. Thanks. Um, now the out of dis districts looks like we're in a negative of 70, uh, 74 thousand dollars. We use the circuit breaker first, so we have to back the circuit breaker as we get the bills in from the collaborative, the out of districts. We have to back that money out to uh, and pay, pay, pay the warrant, which will then offset. You notice that there are no um, monies expended in, other than the 128000 on the collaborative. There is no money spent in that uh, expended column. So <clears throat> we're still moving that money. And you'll notice that like uh, the mass public schools are minus 92. That may not be true because when we use that circuit breaker money, when we back that out, we pay whatever bills come in. So if the collaborative bills come in for us, they get paid. If, um, if you know, some out of district uh, school, they get paid for it. And when the money's gone, as I said, could be as late as December before we back out the total um, uh, uh, circuit breaker money. And then I'll ask for transfers to balance everything. Else. So it could be as late as <coughs> May I ask a question sure. about the um, the right above that the sped wages? The it says we have yeah. therapists, psychologists, and sped clerk. Yeah. Are those all in house? Yes. Um, well, that's more than one therapist. You know, well, it says people. therapists, but then it says psychologist. Yeah, that sh that should be multiple. There's three of them. And the sped clerk, I assume multiples, multiples as well. Okay. Are though what? Um, how are they through the school? What contract are those folks on? Most of the clerks or the psychs. Either. The clerks are C. Okay. And the psychs are A. Okay. 
And so therapists are A. So like in with the teachers? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. I was just curious. Um, one of the other um, questions that came up today is um, about the, uh, the uh, outreach coordinators part-time part salary and where, where it would be uh, charged. Uh, we were charging it to uh, the high school uh, extracurricular activity, but but what, that was prior to that was during the months of <coughs> July and August, and we weren't sure where we were, where we were going to take that particular position this year out. Next year we do have it on a line item, so that we will keep that separate. So as we're building out this um, budget to actual. What we did was we decided to um, put it in central office with uh, business clerical and put it on that particular line item because it is a district-wide, uh, basically uh, district-wide uh, person or will become a district-wide person. <laughs> so I, I don't mean to, I, I hate to jump around, but just so you can take a look. Page uh, 12. If you look at page 12 and you go down to near the bottom where it says business court, you notice it's extended in 2018. And then you look at 2019, differential is the um, is the uh, outreach coordinator, 177. So what we when when because this budget is so tight, what we did is we um, try to uh, get as much into the budget. You know, I know that when we talked about that outreach coordinator, we talked about uh, taking it out of choice. Well, you know, I don't want to do that, so we kind of <coughs> put everything into the budget using all the funds that we have. So we're right down to um, um, not much wiggle room as far as uh, extras on this uh, particular budget. Uh, but we can if we had to, we could move it out. It doesn't, right now, we don't have to, so we're just leaving everything right there. So, at this point, I'll entertain any questions. Or on the budget. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, it's not a question. About the expenditure so far or anything, but just on that same page where you were just, it's page 12. Can you help me understand what those building maintenance charges are? Right. I'd have to go back and, and, and find out what they what they actually are in 2018. But those were things that we did um, to, in the buildings that we don't have line items for. I see. Uh, uh, and so they, they were we just a construction thing. It could be part of a. Um, I, I can go back to 18. The next meeting, I can tell you. It was just more, I was just, I was wondering why there was no 19 budget no, or anything. Budget for that. Okay. Those were things that were was that the, done in the Was 18 the batting cages, the... Was that the TV studio? TV studio doors and the yeah. fire alarms. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah, a lot of it. Do we have to do the elevator as well? Was that 18? I think that was earlier, but I was think it? high school might have been the air conditioning of the rooms. That was that one. Was summer of... What? That was the high school. Remember we, we, we yeah. had the money... It was like... Beginning of that point. But I can get you that information. <coughs> but I mean, maintenance is supposed to be the job of DPW, right? Okay, so that that was just a case where that's why we don't have any budget for that in Correct. 19. In words, but we did have to spend almost a hundred thousand dollars in 18 on it. Well, but let's put it this we way: did we, spend. we did spend. We did spend. We, we did spend. We didn't have to. We didn't have to. Do what the air we could choose not. We chose to. Oh. Yeah. But no one else was going to pay for it for us. That's that good. Good. Okay. All right. And, and, uh, kind of late to the game on that one. Everyone's like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Noted. Thank you. Any other questions? I have a question, Paul. Um, on page 14, 
under the high school. Uh, I mean, obviously, it looks like there's some kind of just um, error here in the, the software or whatever on the school team leader line towards the bottom. But the uh, para professional and sub para is there not supposed to be a number in there? Is that? No, they have no paras up there. They no. Remember, this is not a special ed para. This is a para. Okay. Uh, para All of theirs really are special ed Oh, okay. Yeah, All right. If you go further in the, into the budget to actually okay. you'll see that there are some fed paras. Yep. Okay. Mm. So All right. That's on page eight. Why? Okay. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Moving on to page 23, if there's any further questions. Is it you school on? Choice. The ending balance on school choice, and of course the beginning balance on <coughs> July 1st, is $627,833.90. Um, so on, on um, July 30th, we had our first payment of 66468 and then two following payments of 47346 The $10,017.56 uh, that you see there, those are expenses from FY18 that just got paid in FY19. That's, that's all <coughs> that in charge of that. Other than the salaries for uh, Camp Falcon, which are down below. And the reason why we charge those is we have it set up, account set up for those. And then that's where we charge for the end. I was able to cover all the supplies and materials that we used in Camp Falcon out of the budget. We the FY18 budget to get them started and part out of the FY19 budget. It wasn't a big impact. It was probably three or four thousand dollars. Great. So we should expect then at some point to see this. Three we've authorized 355 to come out of this for 19, and we're going to start to see that as it well, as I, I think this. Yeah. yeah. We're paying on the rears, so it's going to be coming out of this number. Okay, this 582. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> but not until we've expended everything else. Right. Uh, we, we don't want to do anything. This is the whole game plan. I love we'll it, Paul. Got plan. it. Yeah. I love but it. We're going to just. Yep. I'll let that ride, and if I feel it's getting to the point where, I'm, you know, it's higher than I want, then I'll come back to the committee. But I, I have plenty of time to do that. It's not something that I have to make a decision on, you know, when to be. Right. Move it over to that. No. We can do that. Thank you. Um, question. In regard to the um, the sign, is the the funds? Encumbered for that or not? The sign yes. is encumbered. Where? FY18. No. FY18. Okay. It was authorized by the school committee in FY18. That's where I had the funds. You know, I would never okay. I would never move forward <coughs> and say we're gonna do the sign in FY19 and encumber those funds in July because a lot of things could happen in, in twelve months. So yeah, that's all incumbent. The only thing that's not incumbent is the electricity. But it's not a, it's a, it's a, a small amount. Yeah, I, I think I you would, get it if it was $2,500. Yeah, yeah, $3,000, yeah. Is that what it For the year? No, to, to, to run the wire. Oh. The wiring to the. Uh, the that'll be on the maintenance line, then, correct? One time. Yeah, that'll yes, be that will be on, on the maintenance line. Just so you know. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have a, it's gonna be lit. Yeah, good. <laughs> It'll be hard to have an electronic sign without. That will be tough. Yeah. So <laughs> that's a very expensive uh, extension cord, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. so if that's encumbered, then come back to the. Just the signs encumbered, not, not the other. No, no. I got that. So then the ten thousand here, you say it was carried forward from eighteen. Right. That wasn't encumbered? It was encumbered, but I had to bring it forward. I closed out 18. Yeah. So I bring the balance forward. It hasn't been paid. It's going to be paid against the six points. You can see opening balance. Okay. <coughs> uh, the next 
first one is the revolving accounts. Um, I do have one correction. Um, the school to career, that number should be 3762, not 26. And these are a revolving accounts, uh, school and community, that's the sum of revenue. Athletic gate receipts, lost books, facility, they put the, the, the maintenance, DPW. So, where does our Oktoberfest cash show up? Your Oktoberfest cash is in the uh, hashtag. We oh. are national. Oh, okay. So, it's not on is here. Is that the ice cream one? Or yeah. The no, this, you had two. You had the picnic. They were both kind in there. Oh, they were both ice cream? Yeah, they were both ice cream. Oh, yeah. Counted, yeah. Oh, we were <laughs> we were on the money in October. Yes. Next thing, right I'll, I'll show you how to do a couple of other things. Yes. Yeah. Yes. N not let 12-year-olds scoop the ice cream, I think, would be. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's that would be helpful. <laughs> so, so that's in the activity account. Right? That is yeah. correct. Activity. Okay, gotcha. Can, can we get next time a, a, a list of those with the balances? I thought they, em oh, they emailed that to us. The yeah, student activity. activity. You're going to get it next month. Okay. The only reason why you didn't get it this month is they just got their statement. So, okay. uh, in fact, I got one today from okay. an updated statement. That's so, right. you'll, get, you'll get it next month. I, I tried to get it. And it goes to the uh, treasurer for the bank, the bank statements go to the treasurer, treasurer to the school, and they reconcile and they send it back to them. So, yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, on, the, um, on the grants, you'll notice that there, there isn't any revenue. The revenue has come in, it came in after this was published came in um, just a couple of days ago. Um, so in the next, in fact, I just requested more funds. Uh, the way it works, Title I, the assistant superintendent does a wonderful job on Title I, which she does. Once she gets it approved, that's when we start getting our money. Same thing with the 240, and those are the two big grants. The, uh, the Title IV and the Title II, we did get some money in. Um, again, it was after I, uh, so we do have funds coming in. The Indian Ed, um, you'll, you'll notice there, the revenue is right on. Um, inclusive preschool, we have not received funds yet, but we will. Usually, Desi sends us the first payment uh, automatically, and then we have to request monthly uh, payment. So <coughs> I will only repeat this once. It'll be in every packet monthly. But our FY18 reimbursement on Medicare is $313,507. Medicaid. Medicaid. Yeah. That's right. Are we going to have the nice tower grant on here? No, tower grant? No, because we don't receive any money. But that was yes, we did. Oh, yeah. we did. Remember, that's one of the two SEL grants. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can put those on. So is the title, I'm sorry, were you going to ask yeah, go well, So when I read your note about that, I was under the impression of services only. What note did I write? I don't know which note you're talking about. Um, okay. On the tower grant, I thought it was services only that we were receiving. No. You were saying it's services and money? No, it was all money. And we decided what services to provide with that money. The previous, oh. the previous tower grant was Exactly. Yeah, it was all yes, services. that, that was, was all yeah. services. Okay. That someone else wrote for us. This one we wrote, and so we get the money. And so then, but you have to spend it the way you said you would. So. And same with the other one, the innovation grant. Are there any other questions? I was just going to ask Hope, what was um, Title One last year? One ninety nine. Yeah.
Didn't go far away. We can put a book. Tower Grant is two years. Have a chance to look at it. Um, we'll just need a motion. Do we normally put that on the agenda as a voting item? Um, is it not no. under that section? I mean, it's, I thought normally we put budget transfers on the asterisk by it. We normally do. Yeah. I mean, we can, if that's a problem, we can push it off to another one. Because I'm a bottom line guy. <laughs> So are we going to do it next week, next meeting? We probably should just for to keep things. Yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> and thank you, Jeff, for You're noticing welcome. that. You're very welcome. <clears throat> All right. Thank you, Mr. Funk. Thank, thank you. All right, so next on the agenda, we have uh, under specifically unassigned, specifically assigned unfinished business. No. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We have the 2020 nice budget. Nice try. Nice try, but. Just moving right along. Just, just moving right along. Really <laughs> <laughs> so you have in front of you um, a six month, not six months, a three month, the first three months at FY19 as a summary for hashtag we're Mashby. And um, I just want to emphasize this is not designed to be. Um, a business that's ever going to operate as a profit. We have it budgeted as basically, in my mind, sort of a, a cost center. When we have a, our fully sort of developed outreach program, it's a budgeted item. We can reduce some of the costs by revenues from sales. So anyway, at the top, you, you'll see some of the expenses. This is July, August, and September. So the total non-personnel expenses were 859.36. The personnel expenses are 11,174. So the total expenses for the first three months of this fiscal year is 12,033.36. And I did want to point out that, and you have it attached here, the business plan that we had developed projected an annual budget of 47,301. So one quarter of that would be 11,825. So I think we're kind of close there. Then down below, we put the revenue from sales. There's a sales figure, returns and allowances, and then the cost of goods sold. And so if you net that out, the gross profit on sales for those three months is the 15 89 And so what I did in my mind is I took the total expenses we've incurred so far, offset the gross profit. So for the first quarter, it's running at 10497 which is at least aligning with the plan. But I think originally um, Mr. Funk and I worked together on this. He did have it reversed with revenue expenses like a normal business, but that, that I, I don't prefer to see a large loss because it's not meant to necessarily make a profit. So I flipped it around on. <laughs> Do you have any questions on what you see on this? Or, um, No, I think that that last thing you just mentioned is important to note that this was never set up to make a pro, you know, a huge profit and try to make, you know, money. It's, it's a really it's an outreach. Yeah, it's not a store know. in Mashpee Commons. Yeah. Yeah. Set up outreach. So is this I, th I thought the um besides um operating a store that the outreach coordinator was going to um, be doing some other activities? Yes. When that can, position can hits full time, there's we, in the last packet where we showed that sort of communication outreach plan, there was a list of all the things that we want the outreach coordinator to do. So, but at 19 hours a week, that's not really 
So nothing's happening on that yet. We're, we're piecemealing it and, and making it work, but it's not where we want it to be. And when is that projected to go full time? July 1 of 19? By 22. Yeah. <coughs> Pending funding. And on the FY, on this FY19 um, column, this is expected to be coming out of choice, although I, I don't know what, if it conflicts a little bit with what you just said. But in the end of the year, that's where it was, um, I didn't put that next sheet on here, but on this original plan, where it went to the next page, and it said funding sources, we had it coming out of school choice for the operation of this. I don't know if it'll all end up coming out of school choice. Well, I, you know, I just want to say that I go in periodically to meet the students that are working there and just kind of see what's shaken. And um, I've heard such great feedback from the, the kids that work there saying that they really enjoy it. It's not exactly a, you know, um, a demand time Absolutely. and yeah labor intensive job they they are frequently working on their homework and then people come in and you know I take the opportunity to ask them what they're studying you know what classes they have at the high school and I always learn something about some bit of our curriculum that we have to offer and um, you know their interests and stuff like that I mean the one kid I met the other day was I think he said he had AP statistics and another AP class and was you know it's just um, I just think it's a great um, representation of our district, and um, I appreciate this. It's good to know we're not, you know, <laughs> losing our shirts. But um, but I do think that, especially after seeing all the stuff on the STEM tour today, that I think I think we can expand the offerings in that store to be a lot more of things that kids are creating. And mm -hmm. you know, um, I'm curious what the sales are mainly coming from are, are they mostly it's, apparel and it is mostly apparel um, today when we were we were at Southport one of the ladies there that's working on the giving tree specifically said we have a lot of requests on family lists for falcon wear for younger kids and she's gone there so I connected with Lynn Harris to make sure that gets ordered soon so that it can that people can okay. buy it to fulfill those wishes and then the other piece is um, Lynn Harris is working with Paula Bell from Coombs and they're creating a mini maker space corner for sort of that younger group of kids um, figuring out how to make sure two iPads are secure in that area and all of that. And then I know that Mary Kate had some work that she was sending over to make sure um, we get a full representation across the district. Okay, great. So just a question for Paul again. So you said on the technology, the 355 is what was coming out of Shores. That's what we budgeted. That's what, that, that, you know, we, that 355,000. Uh, 411. 411. Yeah. 411 is coming out. That was the offset against the total budget. Uh, <coughs> the school committee decided that uh, the best way to do this is to, uh, you know, charge to that, those line items. We're at three, whatever it was, three point eight. Right. And you know, I'm looking at other line items within the budget to try and offset as much of that as I possibly can before we move into choice. So I have no, uh, you know, I'm not on the speed to, to, to start going into the. So, so just to, to make sure I understand, included in that three fifty five is forty seven three oh one. For Correct. Okay, so it's included in there. We said that we were going to use that. Right. What I did was we had, if you remember when you voted the FY19 <coughs> budget, there were uh, obligations that we, we don't know about, which are uh, buybacks, uh, uh, some of the other things that. Um, we, we uh, are contractual, what we have to do. What we did is we took that money mm -hmm. and we used it to uh, put the, uh, I'll, I'll call it the outreach coordinator into the budget. And then what we did is we, <coughs> well, prior to doing that, we went back and we projected who 
is actually going to retire? They have to let us know by December? Well, they really only have to let us know early if they are eligible for any early retirement yeah. incentive. Yeah. Other people yeah. can tell us two weeks ahead of time and yeah. they go. Well, I'm, I'm talking about the... Right. For the, yeah, for the bigger planning. So, so we, we, I, this is this is what I wanted to do. Use all that money, and then as we get to the end of the year, you know, somebody may say, "Yeah, I'm going to retire in December." Then all of a sudden they say, "Well, something's changed. You know, uh, I'm not going to withdraw my retirement." So. Okay. Now. I just want to be clear in my yeah, mind. Yeah, so we're over the, the 350. Yeah, 355 yeah, is yeah, yeah, the, the I, total I, yeah. of everything. Yeah. Okay. But this, those are the only two things. Because uh, we've already taken out uh, Camp Falcon. Right. I already paid for all the supplies. I can't get back there. Right. But a lot of it I paid out of 18 because in order to get the camp started, And if I may, Mr. Chairman, so we discussed this on the <clears throat> at the last financial working group meeting, particularly, and I just wanted to get this get the meaning of the kind of the hand wave of the committee about how this budget setting up because it's a little it's a bit spooky to me right now because we're at 348 already in technology and we've also brought forward ten thousand dollars for technology, so technically we're already over our budget for technology out of school choice plus the forty seven thousand for. Right. Um, right. That's for um, outreach. Outreach Camp Falcon. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, you, what you said, uh, outreach coordinator. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so that's sixty thousand dollars. I mean, you know, so as we discussed before, is that you know we we really and I say we collectively need to be willing to say no because the technology budget is gone and discretionary spending for technology needs to stop until we move forward farther into the budget cycle and see what kind of money we have. So we had a brief discussion about that. I just want to make sure everybody's on the same yeah, thought process it, for that. But we're clear on that. So it's uh, it's not make it work time. It's the store is closed. And it, because we have to be able we have to be able to say we could not do this because we did we did it's not within our budget. I think that's the that's mm -hmm. what we we need to be able to say to the town that we're there are things we're not doing because we aren't have not budgeted there's no budget for it <coughs> can I just make one point? we have not made any tech purchases since we've had that conversation we oh, no, that's a, that was so no I just yeah. but I don't know if that was clear yeah, yeah. no I, I think it's a massive viewing audience full circle. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it has not we have absolutely not made any purchases yeah. the only thing that is different from what you're saying is if something breaks those are fix issues that we may not have time to come back to you and talk to you about first because depending on what it is we may have to fix it for functioning to happen we can email you know what but yeah. that's it in terms of we don't have anything else on the well, on the chaos the phones went down too at the same time. This is Must have been Comcast or yeah. <laughs> I'll bring my hotspot over. Yeah. So power the whole time. No, phones, literally, I'm on it and it just stopped. So, but I just again wanted to clarify yeah. that. I just don't think I put that. I don't think George and I were, were very clear about that during the last meeting. I just yeah. want to make sure that you know we had a pretty good discussion mm -hmm. about that about about making sure that, you know, and then the expectation from the working group and wh whatever that morphs into in the future was that, you know, the people that develop these budgets below the leadership team, if they have, they need to include a, a contingency repair fund in their budget. It can't be, I'm going to spend my budget of $355,000. Oh, sorry, six servers went down. We need to find 150000 So a little bit of change management here. I'm not a tech guy. I know Chris is, you know, I wish that were true, but yeah. that's not at all true. Yeah. <laughs> but the new system of coding for budgeting for FY20, what I yeah. said to yeah. the working yeah. group is, we've got this for 20. Yeah. 19, we yeah. got to just kind yep. of muddle yep. through. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. But no, but I, they weren't there for that part. So the system is set for mm -hmm. 20 in such a way that I am yeah, actually I'm excited very, for it. <clears throat> um, but we're making good steps. Yeah. We're not. It's not. for. we got to get through 19. 
I, I guess the only clarification that I would add, though, is we know stuff is going to happen in between school committee meetings. The expectation, though, is that within the appropriation budget that currently exists, you're going to find the funds that are necessary for those things, and then yes. if you need to come back to the school committee subsequently, yes. you will do that. Yes. But it's not a presumption of, I will spend today with the belief that I'm going to get approval later. Isn't that what you just said? No. No, it's not. I think what in, it, it's this, that there, there could be, and again, I'm not speaking for five people, there could be the chance that you come back and say, hey, we had a $20,000 hit for technology. We had to remove that from this budget line item to pay for it. I know it's under a big number, right, a big umbrella. There is a chance that this group would say, okay, no. So there probably is a good idea to say, okay, yes, we had to spend this money on the fixing, and then we rely on you guys to say, well, if we don't get that $20,000, our curriculum's not going to happen. Or oh, no, you, that you follow saying, yeah. Okay, yeah. yes, I understand yeah. you now. Sorry, yeah. I didn't yeah. understand. Thanks for the clarification. No, yes, it was not Anytime. that. I need it twice sometimes. It's yeah. my learning style. Don talks, the rest of us translate. Stop <laughs> it. That's not it. He's just speaking <laughs> a different I level of finance. No, I'm just not smart <laughs> enough to understand Don. Thank you, Nicole, so I didn't have to say it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's clear to me. Yeah. All right. Okay. Everybody good there? Yep. All right. I don't want to move along too quickly, so no. Mr. Boer, if you could good. continue on, please. Well, so uh, <laughs> the next item is the FY 2020 mm. budget summary that's in here. And just a, an FYI, November 13th from 1 to 2 is the meeting with the town manager to review um, the FY 2020 budget. Superintendent's budget? Yes, my, my budget. Your and who budget. goes with you to that? So currently it's... I believe it's told myself and Paul, and I recall in past years there has been a school committee member present, so whoever would like to participate in that, please. Well, I'd, I don't know whether it's, um, I mean, I, I only went last year because our finance committee, I was like the alternate for George, but I think that would be you or George. This year, be November 13th? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, what day of the week is that, a Tuesday? Tuesday. Tuesday. I'm happy to attend if it's I will not needed, be available that day. I believe I am, so if George or nobody else oh, can make great. it, let me know. So we'll check with George. He'll be priority. If he can't make it, then let me know, and okay. I should be able to make it. I'll help you out. Okay. You said it was November 13th? Yes. yes. From 1, one to 2. two. Mm -hmm. And so of the narrative in here, do Bring some donuts or something. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone have any topics to discuss within the narrative? I had just a, a question that just occurred to me uh, as we were talking about some of this other stuff tonight point me to what is that by bringing the Coombs um, to one-to-one -one on technology where what is the um, impact of that here is it is it under this curriculum and technology line? Oh, no, that's personnel. Sorry. Well, it's under that one under operating bill, not the personnel. Yeah. So is it is it this 600,000? Or is that, uh, I remember we moved something around in that line. On the one-to-one, on the one, what line? Uh, so we say in our request that the three things that we are, um, sorry, in Patty's request that um, increasing the outreach coordinator to full-time, a new literacy curriculum program, and the addition of Chromebooks at the Coombs School to create a one-to-one -one learning environment. So I'm asking what is the differential for that last piece, the one-to-one -one learning environment for the Coombs School? Is that the entire increase under uh, line F, under FY20? No. No, because no, no. there's a software license. Right. License. So w it, which... How do I know what is it? The 169? No, I don't think it's that much. I think I have it, and I feel like it's forty-two thousand one hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Oh. You feel like it is? Or well, you, it's in green. You seem pretty certain. That's a pretty good. 
<laughs> indication. Unlike somewhere around 42,000. <laughs> <laughs> 42,000. So that's what it's going to take to bring Coombs up one to one. Three Chromebook parts, which is what they have said they need. Part of the three percent down below. Oh, how it explains. Yes. No, but wouldn't it be in one of the, is it in the technology number? There must be in the technology number, not the curriculum. service, right? Well, I don't know if we're adding services or we're, we're trying to make up a gap we had in those years where we were below the blue line in terms of... Um, you have to look at that gap below the blue line for the previous years going starting at FY17. Right, but... We're trying we're, to... We, we've caught up and exceeded it. Well, we've never... I mean, we, we didn't actually receive the blue line in any of the previous years. Well, we'd have to, I think, I, I guess we'd have to figure out what that offset is in that area. Right, be, because we've now caught Didn't back you? up to where we would have been if we were getting that funding every year, and now we're going above that. Well, 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 wait. So, just so anyone at home thinks we've caught up, because we haven't, because the FY19 number is way down here. No, but in the FY20. In the request. Right. In the, if in we the were request, to get what we asked for. Well, that's what yeah. we're talking about. I know, but so, I, just the way you said it, I just I'm wanted sorry. to make so sure. So in the request, we've, this shows that we've caught up to where we thought we would be if we were getting the 2.5% level service budget every year. And we're exceeding that by 400 and. 13,000, correct? Well, that's the gap. So we know, f and we know that the literacy program was to what? 200. So 200,000 of that is? Is the K through program. six literacy. This is K through six literacy. Probably 25 is the outreach coordinator. Didn't we put the whole? Or is it all? No, for FY20. Yeah. 50,000. So yeah, so that's like. What, but, it, but the increase is, it, we're paying half-time now. Oh, yeah, the increase now. is 20. So the oh, the half-time is in 19? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, and, the, 
And then another 42 for the Chromebooks, we just said. Or would we say 47? Oh, wait. No, it would be the full increase because we're going from part-time school choice to full-time operational funds. Oh, yeah. I didn't think it was in the <coughs> 19 budget. Okay. So that still puts us a little short. What about the... Uh, uh, Camp Falcon? No. What about the... Um, Salary increases. No, those are no, measures in your well, service. But just you know, no. to note the blue line at two and a half percent. Well, that, that, yeah, steps, that's, that's that doesn't include needed. surveys. That's that doesn't not, include yeah, salaries. That's it's an assumption of two and a half percent. Unit A yeah. increases. Ah, that's it. So mm -hmm. we should maybe back check that. You should <coughs> you should know that going into that meeting. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that explains the the, the additional piece. Finds a problem with this chart every time we look at it. <laughs> well, it's gone to maybe Ron, that's so, but I can change it. <laughs> say maybe that's a sign. <laughs> I'm gonna add this up again, but the, the numbers don't match the chart. So I'm gonna. The numbers don't match the chart. The number. That's why I'm adding it again. Okay. A, I'm gonna assume human error. My human error. It's not yours. It's mine. <laughs> Did they do the math for you? I might have manually put that number in. Bill Keaton. Is anybody else more cookies? Yeah, so this is, so here's my weirdness. So oh. if you take the, the difference between the level service budget for 17, 18, and 19 and add that up, and then you remove the, the approved budget by the town of Mashpee, the difference is actually $1.7 million. So we should not be graphically portraying that we're catching up by that loss. We may be catching up. We just need to make sure we understand that. Yes, yes, if you look at this graph and you say the amount that we're requesting is over an, an assumed 2.5% guideline, but the $1.7 million below level service that we requested over the last three fiscal years is only a quarter of what we're asking for above the uh, thing. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> statistics lie you sure you and can't liars are yes. statistics. You sure you can't can't be there on November I can't. I'm sorry. I'll be in Burlington. I can call in, though. Can. You're wrong. We'll you just, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're out of order. Yeah, you're out of order. Yeah, I think I got it as well. Long story short, they, I we come this from. area underneath the curve, right, which would be a what, a derivative? Um, this area <laughs> underneath the curve right here is bigger than our, our new gap, much bigger, four times bigger. Mm -hmm. so. Right, but we filled part of that gap, for most of that gap, with school of choice. But we're removing school choice out of this. Right. From all the numbers to make them. Right, but you can't say that that gap was still there. We filled that gap with school choice to be able to maintain the level of service. Right, but I don't know what this the new the new offset doesn't include school choice either. R right. So mm -hmm. when we're projecting now for FY20 uh, level of service budget, mm -hmm. we know that it's exceeding. And we've listed out, you know, the literacy program, which isn't in the budget, or was was not a um, historical item. Mm -hmm. The fact that we're adding additional Chromebooks for Casey Coombs, that wasn't there before. And then some other items that, you know, aren't are what you would consider to be a level service budget, but are an enhancement. And that's to me, is what represents that gap. And historically, what would have happened is we would have utilized school choice, but what we've made the decision is 
to request appropriation to cover that. <coughs> I think keeping in mind though that the blue line never would have fully covered personnel increases, not new hires, but salary. Because of the steps, some you know, even if they got a two point two five percent increase annually, that gets added to a step. So if you're just getting two and a half is a strain. Yeah. I think we're, I, I don't want to move away from what the, the purpose of this draft was. And again, if it's determined it doesn't do us what we need to do, then that's fine. It's, it's, it's to show that we have not been level service funded over the last three budget cycles. Um, and it, I mean, I understand that we filled the gap um, utilizing school choice, but I believe that was under protest. No, and, and I think that's fine, Jeff, but the point then is being very clear to articulate you know, what those additional What includes items. in there. Oh, yeah, absolutely. 100, yeah, 100% yeah, agree. Right? Yeah, 100% agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, right, mm -hmm. because that's, <clears throat> you know, that in my mind is where you're going to get the biggest pushback on. We also, I mean, we should, maybe we should change this, you know, blue line to match the actual salary increases, you know, because then I guarantee we're not going to be past that blue line. Well, or, you know? or you, you don't, this is a, this is a retrospective chart. And I think part of the problem is you add in a perspective potential FY20 proposed yeah. budget. Yeah. And if you are just, if you <coughs> cut this at FY19, that tells the story that you want to tell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The problem is when you bring in FY20, that's not real. Then you have to explain. You have to explain stuff, but without twenty, it's pretty yeah. straightforward. And the other thing too is, you, you, I would, I wonder if it's actually more important to add the, the line starting right at FY17. Remember how we talked about what our, what the gap, what the required gap would be. I'm sorry, what the required budget requ And we spoke about what the required increase in budget by percentage would be in order to catch up mm -hmm. and it went from five percent to eight percent to ten percent to twelve percent right i'm just throwing numbers out there but it went up exponentially if we added that to this point at fy 17 where the budget started to go down you would see a pretty significant increase in an actual budget that would um, be required to maintain level service and re and and recover from the deficits um, <clears throat> and it would be well below what we're asking for now so, I'm good with you know I'll 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 make a budget. I mean I'll make a graph anyway. Patty wants it. You guys want it. I just, but I do understand what you're saying that whatever Patty needs to have enough ammunition. Whoever goes in there to say okay well, that increases this, but that blue line doesn't reflect actuals. It's you know mm -hmm. our it was our assumptions we wanted to do about you know being we made we made decisions as a group what we would like our budget to do, and we assumed that we would like to maintain around two and a half three percent. But well, in reality, it's hard to do that when your <coughs> salaries are increasing over three and a half percent. Difficult to do. Mm -hmm. um, the, Good stuff, Don. I have one question. The graph below that, mm -hmm. I, um, you might want to explain your FY twenty number somewhere because that's projected, right? Yeah, I have a chart. There was a rationale behind it. I <laughs> yeah. Um, I have the backup for those numbers, so I can bring that with me. I didn't explain it, but yeah, if we use it, it anywhere else, I would just put a little asterisk by that FY20 that indicates it's projected and not we're not clairvoyant or we don't have some predictive capacity at estimating enrollment. We should probably make that line dotted too. Yeah. And do you want to, uh, going back to the other one, do you want to change that actual budget to level service funded and maybe say actual budget to level service requested or actual budget to level service requirements or something like that or level service assumptions? Because it's nearly not funded. Aren't the numbers so that were listed there 
That is the approved budget, right? Like much, that's that's the actual budget, right? Yeah. And you just extrapolated a trend line. Yeah, but blue is the problem because it's blue. not level service funded. It's like level service estimated or it's level service well, swag. But his, you can't say estimated for history. That's, that's what it is. No, we started. We started from FY13 and increased it, just, it from two and a half percent. Actually, FY, yeah, 13 and just increased it two and a half percent. It is. And we're just saying we think that's what a what a level service budget could have looked like at two and a half percent if we had gotten those increases each year. But those aren't real either. The real number is just the ones they approved budget by the town. Right. That's the only one. That but I do think the, ta the title is confusing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What should we? <coughs> Don will come up with something. He will. What should we call the blue line? You got 30 seconds, Don. <laughs> <laughs> and go. Do you want to phone a friend? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't actually mean now. I just thought maybe he would have a suggestion. After yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he, he will send, mm -hmm. me, uh, <laughs> send me your thoughts. Yes. <laughs> On the um, on the Chromebooks, are we also planning to ask that that be part of the capital appropriation? We budget? do we do have technology included in capital. We're assuming we're only going to get what they've been getting recent years is thirty thousand. So there's if whatever we get there, we probably could make a little adjustment. Okay, but we would ask for it there too. It's right. on. It's, it, there it's is Chromebooks in e there. Either or, right? Mm -hmm. We don't honestly care which one it comes out of, as long as it's... Well, we'll prefer capital, but... Right. <laughs> Any other thoughts on... And I know we so did talk in the finance working group that, so this is mine that went to the town manager. We can modify versions of this depending on future audiences, but this will probably be in the budget binders that get distributed to selecting and finance. So, oh, it's still my budget before it's your budget. Right. Really? Really? Yes. That's only her ruining your perfect tractor. <laughs> Hers, okay. They don't need to unless make their catch, changes. Unless you can do all these in five minutes. Okay. I just was, yeah, no, if you wanted to grab some of these. Yes. I'll take that back. Yeah. You don't have to make it tomorrow. So, so when do well, you want to have? <coughs> well, he has it. Terry was going to make coffee. What, what's the time then for the school committee to be reviewing in detail the budget? I, I think somewhere in... Uh, I believe that's next yes, next maybe. month, correct? Right. Dis okay. December is a date that we have to put our little summary in the newspaper. Yeah. You're voting on the budget at the... Uh, January 16th. I think it's the January. Your public hearing, I think, is the 2nd of January. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're voting on the 16th. Yes. January 2nd, school committee votes on Fe FY 2020 budget. January 18th, school committee recommended FY 2020 budget due to the town manager. Oh, so you're voting on the 2nd. That's why we No, the public that meeting's on the 2nd. Oh, voting on the 16th. Voting on the 16th. Voting on the 16th. Page that I didn't think we needed. We should probably add that in there, huh? On the uh, major step timeline, when the day we're voting. <clears throat> oh, so public hearing is December twelfth. School committee votes. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, October December twelfth is public hearing. My, my bad. So we vote on the second. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, then you second. have to talk about it next month. And the January 18th is when it goes to the town, is due at the town manager. So, yes, we only really have November to continue to figure out any changes you want to make to, the, to my budget. Okay. Any 
Yeah, you still have some feedback yeah. from the uh, town manager between now and then. It's the day before. Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, the November 13th. Right. Right. So you'll have feedback. We will. Yeah. Timely. Oh, yes, that's right. We will. In fact. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything on that? Nope. Let's move on. Nope. Good done. All right. We can shoot any other questions or comments to us, Patty, if uh, nobody else has anything. Okay. I know you're not correspondence. Correspondence. I just want to share two quick things. This came from Gail Jones, dear Mrs. DeBoer, on behalf of the Mashpee Congregational Church. I wish to express our sincerest gratitude to all of the students who volunteered at our pumpkin patch on September 29th, 2018. Their commitment to work on such an endeavor was exemplary with incredible teamwork with every volunteer for the entire morning. Again, thank you for so much for your assistance in contributing to a wonderful yearly event for the town of Mashpee. That was mostly football players who unloaded the pumpkins from the big truck. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then sharing this email from a parent, dear Mr. LaBelle, I felt the need to reach out to you and tell you how truly impressed my husband and I have been with our son's teacher, Mary Crimmins. Our son was having a difficult time transitioning into first grade and grasping the new rules and routines, and Mary reached out to us almost immediately so we could work together to help him adjust. After just a few days of open communication, we saw immediate and significant improvement in our son. He thrived on the connection Mary had established both with him and with us and his excitement for learning and for school is back. My husband and I would like to recognize Mary for her outstanding efforts on our son's behalf. In my eyes, she has gone above and beyond as a teacher, providing us with daily talking points for how our son has been doing and improving. Some teachers may have waited until parent-teacher conferences in November to let us know how much our child was struggling. But Mary, as busy as she is, was proactive about the situation and took the time because she truly cares about her students. It is teachers like Mary and, of course, Michelle Richmond, she was shouting out the previous year, who remind us what a fantastic school system Ashby has and how much we love that our child is at Casey Coombs. You should be so proud of your staff. So, Very that nice. was nice. Great. Good stuff. Thank yeah. you. Not bad for an up-and-coming school district. <laughs> yeah. That's right. We are up-and-coming. <laughs> and that's, I don't know, that's a a single you know one case but that's something that I hear a lot about teachers continually reaching out to uh, parents and, and trying to get help with the students so it's great to hear <coughs> all right so speaking of uh, our next school committee meetings and what we're doing mm. next item on the agenda is uh, to discuss a potential consolidation of future school committee meetings Gender. It's in your packet for this. <laughs> yep. Oh. So we're still not in any position to vote on anything, but you know, we're just going to, if anybody has any comments or discussion on this, we plan on discussing this at the uh, efficiency and effectiveness um, group, but we have not met yet since the last meeting. Uh, we do have a meeting scheduled for, I believe. Is it next week? I don't know. I'll have to look at my calendar, but we do have um, a meeting with, uh, yeah, George and I and, and uh, the 15th. Okay. So we will be meeting soon. But in the meantime. Uh, That's after. Isn't that after the next school committee meeting? Yes. Which is fine. We'll do it in December. Yeah. We make any changes because nothing would be changing in the next few months. Yeah, this next few months. Yeah, so the opportunity is in the spring, basically. Right. I believe so. March yeah. through June. Mm -hmm. Definitely after the budget vote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I personally don't see a reason why definitely June can't be combined. Mm -hmm. March and April potentially could be also combined. And why not May? Uh, it's uh, election, around election time, so it probably... You have and we also do... It's also when we do um, yeah, superintendent yeah. evaluations as well. Okay. So, so May is May seventh election day. It must be. Is it? It's the first Tuesday, right? Yeah. So, can we dispense with this at some point? 
dispense with this? Yeah, meaning like, decision. can we have a vote at the next meeting and maybe combine March, April, and June? So if if we have a a loose consensus, it would you know we don't really need to discuss this at the next you know effective and efficiency meeting. But if the committee as a whole doesn't feel that either we don't want to combine any or we can't come to some kind of general consensus, then it is something we should bring back and kind of figure it out. But we don't need to. So yes, we potentially could vote on it next meeting. Um, I know George isn't here, which kind of makes it a little difficult to feel everybody out on how they feel on it. But um, but if we had, say, two or three dates that we kind of loosely agreed on on the committee, we can put that on the agenda to you know, vote to combine those. Mm -hmm. Okay. If the election's the... Seventh. Seventh. It would just be hard. Yeah, I personally think we should leave May alone. That's, That's just, fine. Yeah. But I, th I think March and April and June can be handled in a single meeting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. My only request is that that we don't put any extra work that we're going to lose time to do and as a group during these potentially three lost meetings onto the working groups because yep. I don't have any more bandwidth for any extra working group time. But you are about to because you are losing. No, it doesn't no, work that I'm way. I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I can spend all the time you want at night. Yeah. But I would also within the day is getting less and less. So. Something to think about over the next month before we vote on this is that uh, to consider that uh, the meetings will likely go longer uh, because we're going to have to fit more into one agenda. So yeah. we'll have less meetings, but that one meeting will likely last longer, as as they typically do with the combined meetings we have now. Anyway, so just keep that in mind over the next month before we make the vote. That you know. That's the trade-off. Yeah. yeah. No, I think, well, I personally think that we're already sort of seeing benefits of the working groups mm -hmm. in reductions of things on our agenda and things that are happening um, with Patty, you know, kind of taking yep. the lead on those things. So <coughs> I, I hear you, but I, I think, and if we could get that efficiency and effectiveness group to report back with something. Um, <laughs> You're going to be I blown think, away. Yeah, yeah. I think. I, I'm pinning a lot of my hopes on that one. So, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's cool. Okay. All right, so, so you can maybe you can talk with George. Yeah. Well, why don't we at least, um, you know, well at least have it. No, well at least have it as of now penciled in, penciled in for the agenda. The proposed change that you can. Yep. Pencil it in there. That way, I mean, if we have it on there for a vote, George can. You know, yeah. still say what his piece is, and we don't need to necessarily approve all three. And there's no limitation for as long yeah. as it's got a posting. Mm -hmm. We post it in advance. There's no limitation on how many meetings we can schedule no, off, off this meeting. Exactly. Yeah. That's exactly if something right. comes up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. All right. Good. So we'll pencil that in, and uh, as of right now, we kind of looking at March, April, and June. All right. Nobody has anything else to add on that. We'll move on to the next item under uh, new business. Uh, Mr. So, Boyle. So far, um, Gail's had very little response to, um, I, I forget if it's five responses that said they could come. So I did say that maybe she should call them as well. What she did was email. Uh, well, I, d I just realized, though, this is the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving. No, it's no, after it's Thanksgiving. After Thanksgiving. This weekend. Oh. Oh, oh no! Sorry, I'm looking at the night. It, my calendar jumped to 2019 for some reason. Okay, I was going right. to be like, "Damn, I can't even be there." <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think she'll do that one extra piece to call, but if it may not be something that works, we're not sure. But we'll communicate back. I mean, well before the next school committee meeting because that's too close to the time if it doesn't end up happening. So that's a Tuesday. Mm -hmm. okay. So that's all I have on that. What the next item? Uh, yes. So we have a tuition waiver request. This is a student who's a senior. So this is from the mom. I would like to request a tuition waiver for AD for this school year, grade 12. She has been in the Mashpee School District since preschool and would like to finish out her senior year at MHS. And she, we have no seats left in grade 12. There were two and they were taken. 
So you would, did they put a, she put a star next well, to This is also oh. not indicated with a vote. That needs to be a vote though, but. So Although it won't, the other. if you vote the next time it won't, she's not going anywhere yet. So I'm not gonna kick her home. <laughs> but. All right. So why is the, just clarification, why is it a request for a tuition waiver if there are no, oh, so she oh. would. If there was a choice seat, she would have moved into that. There's I see. no way, and she's ah. now a non-resident because they moved over the line. Gotcha. But she's currently attending another school. Correct? No, no, she's with us. She's they just recently moved. Okay. And so she was coming in August. Yeah. That was nice. <laughs> Okay, so not, we'll vote on it next time. We'll have to vote on that next we'll meeting. Yeah, next time. and if you could put that request in the packet as well. Yes, I will. So that way. Yep. Just redacted. Yeah, redacted. Yeah, yeah. yeah, obviously. She originally had completed a school choice application, mm -hmm. but All right, and the next thing is the you know at town meeting they did vote to add a school committee rep to the capital improvement planning committee. And um, so you can start to decide who that might be, but according to um, Terry Cook, that is not a this year addition to the plan. It's a next year. Oh, okay. So even though they're getting ready to have those meetings, this does not take effect till the next year. So it's for FY20? Mm -hmm. So this would be a, vo a voting member mm -hmm. on the committee. Because mm -hmm. now it's up to seven, they've added two because it could make it even, so. Another member at large. So is that something that would go on in May after the reorganization? That's when we could add it as a... Oh, yeah, a probably. Like a That's probably a good idea, because yeah. we may, the, uh, may not have we a know member. how the frequency with which that committee is going to meet? Do we know anything about... We can find out by May. <laughs> yeah, I mean... Well, we'll know, too, from the experience we have for this fall when we go with our capital improvement request. Yeah. Okay. I, I assume it's going to be I monthly. think it would be tight span, multiple meetings. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I see. So not done. an annual commitment. It would no, just it, be compressed enough. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. All right, good. So yeah, we'll add that for the, the May reorg. May, yep. All right. Nobody else, nobody else has anything on that one? Then we will uh, move on. Um, I do not have any other items. If anybody else has anything that, yes, sir. Do you want to discuss the delegate? That's look. for MASC. Oh. That's just what I have. Great idea. Yeah. <coughs> I believe it's the last meeting we had before we have to yes. somebody. Yeah. I am not 100% sure that how many um, meetings I can make at the conference, so I don't want to throw myself into the bin. I know you're having some And unfortunately, yeah, you read, got my email yep. that I will not be able to make it. So, I mean, I, I went there last time. It was, a, it was actually a productive meeting with the MASE. It, Jeff, I've got his last name. I suppose his name is the same as mine. Um, Sweat. Jeff Sweat the, oh, yeah, is the division, mm -hmm. the division president. And he just, we sat down in a big group in one of the little areas, um, had a discussion. There's also a delegate meeting, in, I think, mm -hmm. in the morning. Um, that was actually on like Wednesday morning as well. Yeah, so it was, was weird. A, it was a lot weird too. You, have, you, you know really have was. to look in the book and figure yeah. out when the delegate meeting is because it's not well publicized. Uh, <clears throat> but you, it's I mean you're a voting member for MASC to when I think they did some gave my, everyone pay raises except for the school committee members last year. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I I, I don't want to put my hat in the ring. I'd love to do it. I just unfortunately can't guarantee I'll be there. I would expect it to be Wednesday because if I remember last year, that was a confusion. It turned out to be Wednesday was the so. delegate meeting. Yeah. yeah. And I'm out of town that entire week, so. Okay. Well, oh. Yes. This is me. I mean, the only thing is, I, I, I'd love to know when the delegate meeting is. I'm so on this sure website. Right okay. Now. Okay. okay. I, I downloaded their app today. It supposedly was updated, but I can't see anything about the agenda on here. So, um, I mean, I, you know, me personally, I mean, it, just me, I mean, it, it's, if we can make it, we make it. I mean, it's, well, know, I plan on being there for most, if not all, the conference. you be there for your awards ceremony. Right They're going to collect my hardware. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yes. The, it says the 2018 delegate assembly will be held on Friday, November 9th, 2018. Sure. Did we look at Wednesday? Because 
just to make because I, I believe that that's what happened. Yeah. I when, showed when, up on Friday and I said, "Oh, here. I'm the delegate." They said, "Oh, the meeting was two days ago." Yeah, that's but I feel like that's <laughs> like a combined versus each yeah. division's meeting. Like we oh, have our the division. We have our little division meeting. Yeah. So. Well, the delegate doesn't have to go to that meeting. Which one? The the, com one? the, the division seven. Are we seven? Yes. Think, yeah. Division seven meeting. Anybody can go to that. And just the, the voting, the one where everybody, the delegates vote for whatever mask is putting in their bylaws is the, the important one. That's right. Friday. That's Friday. Morning. But it, it does say that the <coughs> member districts may designate a school committee member as a voting delegate and notify MASC using the official delegate form no later than October 19th, 2018. What's today? October 24th. Yeah, right? There you go. Great. So I mean, I think we can prop, but. There is an official delegate form. Yeah. It's yes. very official. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, yeah. well, at least, <laughs> if you don't mind, well, at least submit no, that's it fine. With, with your uh, I'm happy to do it. It says, okay, sorry. Good. With great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> Friday, November 19th at 3.15 p.m. At 3.15 p.m., okay. I'll, I'll put that in here. And then they're on the website, which I can share with all of you, are the um, resolutions. Yeah. And so you would just read them and tell Nicole how you want her to vote. <laughs> okay. So I'll send those out now. But Gail's going to sign her yeah. up? Okay. Okay, thank you. Did we find out about my question about the awards supper? About getting us added to that? How are we supposed oh, to we do Oh, we did. That? We did add We added everybody. Okay. Although we might have removed you. Now we need to take people out. Because I, know, I heard Gail calling oh. to say if somebody can't come, we paid for them. I, told her I, wasn't I think after the last one, we thought everybody, I, oh. I, that was on me. I just assumed. Because we want support. Cole's going to be there by herself, <laughs> even at an empty table. Let's well, so yeah. me hoping, Patty. Yeah. yeah. We'll and a, and a, well, Sam and wants to come. I don't maybe know. some family. He can come to my Yeah, he can sit in your spot. <laughs> maybe George will come. Yeah. George will be there. Oh, he'll be there. Oh, yeah, George will be there. Yeah. All right. Do we have anything else? No. No. <laughs> All right, and no public has walked in since uh, last public comment, so we do not have any addition. Do we have a motion to adjourn? We move to adjourn. Motion second. by Jeff, second by Nicole. Any yes. further discussion? None? Yes. Done? Yes. Yes. And yes. Thank you. Seven o'clock. Nice recovery. Seven o'clock.